I call the member for Goldstein. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker, one of the proudest moments of every member of parliament's years, in fact, we're very fortunate to be able to do it on multiple occasions, is of course to attend a citizenship ceremony. Now, I attend them regularly in the city of Bayside and the city of Glen Ira, seeing those bright, shining, beaming faces of excitement and enthusiasm of those people who have decided not just to make Australia home, but to make a commitment to our great country. You know, the, law, the mayors turn up in their full regalia. They have their mayoral bling, as I call it, which always makes them far more attractive for photographs with new citizens than us lowly members of the House of Representatives, Deputy Speaker. But they share and they, uh, when administering that oath, demonstrate the pride, the hope, the ambition of new Australian citizens and what they contribute to our great nation. And as part of the greatest joy of Member of Parliament to go to those ceremonies and be a participant, in fact, an honour and a privilege. And it goes to the heart of the privilege of citizenship itself. I always give a regular speech talking about the history and the traditions of our great country and over thousands of years, our journey from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders through to European settlement and the ongoing uh, migration waves that continue to enhance and strengthen our nation. The stories and the individual history that we all have in bringing to this country, including my own and its diversity as it is for everybody else, but how the continuing story of our great country is written by today's generations and those into the future. About the incredible achievements of our great country as part of an ongoing and enduring story of freedom, responsibility and the pursuit of justice for everybody. An imperfect country towards a more perfect outcome and journey. And that's the power and the privilege of citizenship. And that's what this government understands about why we treat it with such sanctity, such respect and such hope about the ambitions of future citizens of our country. And that's why citizenship is at the core of how we see ourselves as a government. And it's important that we make sure that there's integrity in the citizenship process, making sure that everybody who becomes a full citizen is able to do so uh, and with the full confidence of the Australian people in making sure that it's done in a fair and appropriate process, that everybody meets the criteria and as part of that process makes their commitment to our great nation and its future success as part of celebrating the traditions of freedom and responsibility. And of course, it's in recognising the full potential of every person who shares the ambition and values of our great nation to become citizens. And that's why this government has invested $9 million into the systems and staff and established a task force to focus on complex cases to remove the barriers and the gaps for many people seeking citizenship while maintaining the integrity of the system so that Australians have confidence in it. And of course, there's been an incredible amount of effort that's gone into this government to do so. There was a coordinated range of improvements to the entire citizenship processing pipeline during the past financial year. Recruitment of increased staff to increase process application, improve staff and training and revision of policy and procedures to assist staff to be able to do so. Establishing multidisciplinary task forces to address some of the most complex identity cohorts, introducing ambitious internal targets to achieve milestones, increasing the number of citizenship appointments available for applicant interviews and testing and encouraging online lodgement to easy application to promote processing efficiencies. These are administrative processes, but they go to the heart of what then we have been able to achieve. We have seen an 80% increase in the number of citizenship by conferral applications approved. We've seen a 62% decrease in invalid outcomes, which have been much quicker to process, so that those people who are denied a pathway to citizenship can correct if appropriate. We've seen more than 145,000 new Australians have their citizenship by conferral applications approved in the last financial year, up from 81,000 in 2017-18. Deputy Speaker, at every point, this government has done what is appropriate to preserve the integrity of our citizenship application process. This government has done everything it should to make sure that there's pathways for, for uh, those people who wish to be new Australians to reach their potential as citizens. And we see that on the faces, the smiles, the joy, 
and the eyes of new citizens there sworn in at those citizenship meetings.